And I'm still hammering Brody, but he's taking everything I got. And he's a tough man. He can hang right in there. Here we are going. We back outside again. We go all over the stadium. We go all over the arena. We're going down the aisle right there. It makes no difference. Here I am saying right here, I'm asking for a no disqualification match. No rules, everything barred is what I'm saying right now. I'm begging for it. And Gordon, it doesn't matter where it's at. You pick any state in the union, you pick any place you want to, Brody. Because you and I are going to get together. You're going to quit running rough shot on all these kids down here and quit pushing them around because this old Texas boy, you can't push around anymore. So, Brody, all you got to do is be a man for the first time in your life. Step in the ring, and we'll see how tough Boozer Brody really is, Gordon. Thank you so very much. <clears throat> Blackjack Mulligan, and we'll be seeing him in action in the ring in just a couple of months. Mr. Rick Link, Bruiser Brody has uh, just appeared on the scene, as it is uh, quite obvious. As a gentleman, I want to make one thing clear that you didn't make clear. In the last Omni, Bruiser Brody was the winner, so the score in this whole thing is BB1, Cowboy Mulligan, zero. Thank you. Now, as the regular Bruiser Brody, I want to make one other thing clear. Come in here real close, real close. I want you to look at my face. I've been beat up before. I've been beat up by bigger guys than Mulligan, and I've been beat up by smaller guys. And I ain't ashamed to look at nobody out there and tell about it. But let me tell you one thing you forgot, Mulligan. And you better remember it before you climb in that ring in the Omni. If you're one of those few that do get a piece of my you can bet your last nickel I'm going to get up. Because I always got up when I got beat up before. And when I get up, I'm going to get you. And you know what I mean when I say get you. I'll get him. Well, it's no, no disqualification and no count out. I don't need a count out. I don't need a disqualification. What I need is Big Mouth Cowboy Mulligan backing up what he's been passing out. I have a very special uh, situation going on right now as uh, Ted DiBiase is going to engage in a workout. Uh, as I said uh, before, of course, he's been undergoing an intensive training regimen, and he has asked uh, Iron Mike Sharp, Rick and Robert Gibson, Tommy Rich, and Steve O. Uh, to join him in this workout and uh, it might give all of you perhaps a little more of an inside look at professional wrestling from the standpoint of uh, you'll see exactly how some of these uh, competitors will train uh, it'll be interesting to see exactly how uh, DiBiase intends to uh, conduct this workout now the uh, first man out there is uh, Iron Mike Sharp now DiBiase will be trying various approaches uh, to each man. He wants men of varying heights, weights, and sizes. Uh, picking a man like Iron Mike Sharp, he picks a beautiful standing switch by DiBiase, and uh, it is uh, Sharp reversing that situation. A good escape from the full Nelson, and it is uh, DiBiase back on his feet. So they shake hands, and uh, next it will be uh, Robert Gibson, I believe, moving up. Now, uh, DiBiase would pick a man like Sharp because of his strength and because of his weight. Now he'll take on somebody like uh, Robert Gibson to check for speed and agility. Beautiful fireman carry takedown by DiBiase. And another fireman carry takedown by DiBiase. Standing switch and a forward leg pickup and... Uh, Drops him to the canvas. There he goes into the spinning uh, toe hold. From there, he would have gone normally to the figure four. As uh, football teams and uh, inter-squad scrimmages, uh, you're seeing the very, very same thing here, or as with baseball teams. Uh, each man testing the other's medal. And uh, going, as you can see here, uh, perhaps at about three-quarter speed. Because the idea here is uh, for training, for, for honing those skills. Uh, 
All right. And again, a, a discussion between the two of them, uh, perhaps discussing something that happened. And now, DiBiase talking to Steve O. Steve O, of course, uh, national heavyweight champion. Tommy Rich still out there. And uh, all right, see what exactly they're planning and doing here. Ah, all right, Steve O up on the second rope. On the second rope. Cross body block. Beautiful move by DiBiase into an uh, outside cradle. Now, I, and that, that makes sense. Rhodes, Dusty Rhodes, of course, using that cross body block, uh, was successful in defeating Harley Race for the World Heavyweight Championship. And so obviously, DiBiase, I see what he's doing. I see what he's doing. Defensing, taking uh, a possible uh, uh, adverse effect upon himself and turning that right around into uh, uh, something that's positive for him. Exactly what's happening here now. Up and off the ropes. Again with a cross body block and again does a back roll and again rolls into that cradle. So, taking a possible pinning combination and as uh, has been said many, many times, when you're in the process of pinning your opponent, you are at that point in the most danger of being pinned yourself. And so that is exactly what DiBiase is working on. All right, into a top first lock. And reversal by DiBiase into a hammer lock. And it was uh, Rich. Got him very nicely. DiBiase broke it up and back on his feet. Outstanding scrimmage. Now, wildfire, Tommy Rich. Block kick down, and it was DiBiase. Again, as I said, they're moving at uh, perhaps uh, three-quarter speed, maybe just a little bit faster. Single leg pickup, and how will DiBiase defense it? He defenses it very nicely, using the other leg. DiBiase, as I've said, honing those skills, getting himself to uh, razor-sharp perfection. Beautiful move. Excellent takedown by DiBiase. Fainted high, dropped low. All right, let's see. Ricky Gibson moving in. And again, uh, there had been a lot of conversation between Ricky Gibson and Ted DiBiase. All right, it's uh, Gibson going up on that second rope. So they're drawing that cross body block once again. And he'll be picking up some additional weight here from Gibson. And uh, all right, Gibson poised. Cross body block. Beautiful uh, reverse roll. DiBiase may be giving away, uh, in a sense here, some of his strategy, but uh, uh, the intenseness of this young man, uh, the openness, uh, the honesty of the situation uh, is interesting indeed. Now, back in there with uh, Iron Mike Sharp. Sharp at about 260 to 270 pounds. And again, he'll uh, go against this man because he wants the weight factor and he wants the strength factor involved. And Sharp, good block, good counter by DiBiase. A possible slam to a, a good uh, suplex. And uh, DiBiase making comment, he's big. Iron Mike Sharp is big indeed. Roll, twist away. Bring him back in, use the leg. Sweep back in for a double leg pickup into the spinning toe hole from there to the figure four. So DiBiase moving exceptionally well. And as I say, for all of you at home, you're getting an idea here, sort of an inside look. And once again, Steve O, good friend of Ted's. Uh... All right. DiBiase obviously explaining to uh, Steve O exactly uh, what he would like to either defense for or offense for. See what they've... Uh... All right. Hammerlock on uh, DiBiase. DiBiase tries to swing in, does. Swing free from his man. Power slam. And uh, that one... Uh... 
Yeah, that stunned, uh, that stunned uh, Steve-O for just a moment. That power slam uh, caught him. I said, of course, this is a workout. I repeat once again, for those of you who might have tuned in late, this is a workout. And uh, Steve-O had the wind knocked out of him at that point during this workout. Okay, Robert Gibson moving back into the ring. up by uh, DiBiase, uh, missed the side headlock, a standing switch, goes to the side, is locked into a hip lock, take down, and it is uh, Gibson with the head scissors, DiBiase escapes. And as you can see, of course, when you get that much body contact, even though they're mo moving at, uh, say, about three-quarter speed, that much body contact, uh, there's going to be an elbow uh, caught in the face or uh, in the pit of the stomach or what have you, and... Uh, kind of contact temper scan flare but uh, these men are uh, professionals they realize that these things can happen good takedown and robert gibson uh, shakes hands and i do believe that concludes the uh, workout at this time and uh, all of these men of course uh, good friends of ted dibiase and uh, lending their time and efforts and i certainly want to thank them on behalf of georgia championship wrestling for us to get this inside view at uh, uh, a workout session uh, where uh, you get a chance to find out exactly uh, how these men uh, do uh, uh, continue their training regimen during the week when they're not in the ring facing actual competition and certainly uh, as any football team baseball team or what have you scrimmaging of this kind obviously is very necessary indeed. Well, as they leave the ring, I might point out that uh, I'm hopeful of talking to a gentleman uh, who is known as the world's strongest wrestler, and, uh, well, Tommy Rich is nearby, so uh, excellent workout. You know what? I think the man's ready. You know, I like Dusty Rhodes. I like Ted DiBiase. You know, like it was said earlier, business is business, you know, and, and this should be should be one heck of a night you know i'm looking forward i got some interest down there but i'm gonna be there for a reason too well if it ain't big mouth what's going on big mouth well, you're doing all the talking yeah. here yeah you throw those little things around your neck i think dusty Rhodes gonna kick you where the sun don't shine boy well, i wish i had the opportunity i wish i had the opportunity ted, good work i look right here right now ted may, may yeah. i ask you, you and to. yeah all you may i ask you, you gentlemen to, to, to leave i would like to talk to mr patera please and i'd well, sure he's got plenty to say i would to say and see what mr patera patera i would why don't you two young boys try to act like gentlemen such as an educated man, such as myself. You know, last week I told everybody that I explained these gold medals. Now, Gordon, I shall do that. You know, I got so many credentials. I got all the gold. And it just keeps stacking up and stacking up. And I always love to talk about myself. I always love to remind Ken Patera how great he actually is. These were from the Pan American Games in 1971, Cali, Columbia. This was the overall championship medal that I attained down there 10 years ago as an amateur. These are individual gold medals. I'm the only one to ever participate in the Pan American Games and win all of my events in weightlifting. Four gold medals. The clean and press, the snatch, the clean and jerk, and the overall number one that said and proved that Ken Patera was the strongest man in the world in 1971, and I still maintain that. And as far as Tommy Rich goes, Tommy Rich says that this belt belongs to him. Well, Tommy Rich, you just come after it and I'll stick it down your throat, Thank boy. you very much, Ken Patera. Now for that bell to ring, King Kong Mosca going up against Ken Sims. One fall, a 10 minute time limit. Mosca, who had an outstanding uh, amateur career in high school, college, and then, of course, went on to play uh, in the uh, Canadian uh, Football League for a number of years. A devastating competitor. All right, King Kong, break it up. 
Moscona with a front chancery on Tim's. Needs the chancery, oh brother. All of the weight, all of the pressure put on the neck and the spine in that particular instance. Back into the ring ropes now, the referee calls for the break. And it is Tim pounding away at the midsection of uh, King Kong Mosca. And Mosca retaliates very quickly. The short forearm that drives uh, Tim's to the canvas. Now a snap mare that takes him back once again. Brings him into the uh, turnbuckle. And Mosca beginning to dominate this situation. Tim's was caught and uh, driven back to the uh, canvas again. Tim's coming up very slowly. Mosca again uh, with a ripping right hand. Again, using that front chancery very effectively, keeping the left arm and the head imprisoned at the same time. And Tim's trying to whip him into that far turnbuckle, and it was Mosca hanging onto those ropes and then using a forearm very effectively. Mosca in behind his man now. Mosca keeps that pressure on, keeps that head twisted. And Tim's would like to break free if he could. The referee keeps checking with him. Tim's trying to rip across the face of King Kong Mosca. Finally is effective, and it is Tim's now using that elbow. And Mosca just fires to the midsection, fires one, glances off the jaw. Mosca catches him again. Mosca, over the years, has suffered his share of injuries. Well, you can hear uh, Mosca making his uh, comments. He, he was a tremendously powerful man. Had uh, shoulder, shoulder surgery uh, a couple of years ago, but has recovered, uh, obviously, 110% uh, from that. Mosca goes for the sleeper hold. Mosca has the sleeper hold. And this is something I might point out once again should never be used uh, by any of you uh, who are watching. It's an exceptionally dangerous hold and uh, is exceptionally effective as you can see. As, uh, Ken Timms lapses into unconsciousness. Of course, it is Mosca's responsibility now uh, to revive the man. And this is exactly what Mosca's in the process of doing now. Tim's partially conscious now, brought about by a rapid blow to the back of the heart. And so there's your victor, King Kong Mosca. The tag team, we're talking about Jimmy Superfly Snuka and the former Freebird, Terry Gordy. That's right, it is the former Freebird, Freddie Miller. You know there's a lot going on out there in the rest of the world today. And everywhere you look, baby, you see the Superfly and you see Terry Gordy's name right there on top. And you know something else? You see us rubbing people's noses in that mat just like we like to do. But one thing, Freddie Miller, we haven't got no paddles draped across these shoulders yet. But that won't, it won't last long. We will have them, won't we, brother? That's right. You know, Terry, there's one thing I'd just like to mention about my man back here. Don't have to mention about he's the old free bird anymore about him. Right now, we're back into our new stuff, and we're getting down. And there's only one thing i like to mention, Terry, that we don't need nobody. We don't need you out there. All we need is just Terry 
and this two. Thank you, gentlemen. Your time's up. Let me mention one thing. A week from tonight, big wrestling by Steve O, our next guest on the best of this week. He has two belts simultaneously. He's half of the Georgia Tag Team Champions, and he's the National Heavyweight Champion, so I know things are going good. Well, things are going good, too, you know, Freddie Millen. And Tommy Rich has always said before, when the fans are behind you, it seems to make it that much easier. You know, when we're coming to Gainesville, Georgia, we're coming to Marietta, we're going to be in Tifton. And there's all good people. They're all good people that just keep it going on. That makes it easy, or a little bit easier for you to attain big championships. You know, Patera comes out here with big muscles. Sure, he worked long and hard to get where he's at, but so did a lot of other people. A lot of other people look worked long and hard to get where they're at in the wrestling business and right now the gold the gold is what it's all no gaining it's ohio and there'll be action going there and all over that area but right now steve i want to thank you and ask you i know one of your friends is going to speak while you love ted d here's the american dream who has worked join me out here today for uh, it's the last time ted d about the great athlete west texas state second generation wrestler great athlete ted d the one thing that's missing from your ripper tender, Jack, is the gold on my shoulder. A lot of people talked about this match. It's going to be a great scientific match. Yes, it will. But the dream's got a little bully in him, you know. Just a little bit, and I ain't going to play with you, Jack, because I went too hard, too long for what I'm carrying on my shoulder right now. It's going to be a good while before they come down the pike and get it, you understand? So it's going to be one hell of a match. Dusty Rose and Ted DiBiase. Down they won't forget it. But I don't know if you're really ready for the battle, baby. Because in the heat of battle, the dream can get real, real bad. I'll tell you right now, let's show the conclusion of this.